were you? Did you enlist? I enlisted. Yeah. Why did you join? The Korean War. I was in the National Guard before that. Okay. And when we, when the Korean War started, <clears throat> we all discussed it, how we were going to step forward, and uh, I was the only one that stepped forward. What happened to the other people? I don't know. <laughs> Why did you pick the Army? Because I was a National Guard. Oh, okay. And I knew the, basically the weapon, yeah. And what was that? The M1 Grand. Okay. And uh, do you recall the first days when you got in the service? What was that like? Well, we took a train to uh, Fort Dick, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And when we got off the train, we had a couple of drinks. And uh, one of the guys got loaded. Yeah. Where did you have this booze with you, or where no, did you have no, the drinks? No. We stopped in the bar. <laughs> so what happened to that person who got loaded? Did you help him out? Uh, he got his ass chewed out. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. What did it feel like when you went down at Fort Dix? You know, how did you feel? I I felt good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about your boot camp or tr basic training there? Is that where you did it at Fort Dix? Or? Yeah, Fort Dix. Yeah. 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 And then I I went down to uh, tank school, and that's what I signed up for. Mm -hmm. Tank school. Armored, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> the the boot camp was great. What was great about it? I learned uh, a, a lot of things, you know, uh, about the military and, uh, and about <coughs> the weapons. Mm -hmm. And what other weapon besides the Grand did you work with? When I, got, when I got to Korea, I was an ammo bearer for a 57 section. And then my squad leader got killed. Well, what's the 57 section? What's that? 57 regardless. Rifle, okay. Yeah. So what size is that? Is that 57. 57 centimeters? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, now, can you remember any of your basic TIs or instructors from basic training? Does it, did they, anyone make sense? No. <laughs> okay. How did you get through basic training? Was, it, was, it, was yeah. it difficult for you or was it easy? No, no, no. I was a young guy. What does that mean? A young guy? Didn't I know any 18, better? I was 18. Okay. And uh, it, was, it didn't bother me at all. Mm -hmm. you know? Did you get any special awards or anything in basic training? No. This segment's more about your experiences. We'll talk more about Korea. and. Uh, Okay, you were in the Korean War, and where exactly did you go in Korea? Where where did you go? Where did you serve over there? Or how did you get there? Let's start with getting there. On a boat or? Well, <clears throat> we flew over to Japan. Okay. And then we took a train down south to Sasebo. Mm -hmm. And then we went to uh, on a boat to Busan. Okay, you went to Pusan. Can you remember arriving there and what was it, what did it feel like? A lot of people were hanging from the light bulbs. You're kidding. What what do you mean? They had hung people? Civilian. Civilians were hanging from the light bulbs. They had been hung by the North Viet Korean? No. no. They were hung by their own people, I guess. Holy cow. How many would you say? Maybe a half a dozen. Oh my God. Now you said you were a loader on this recordless rifle. That was your job, right? Yes. That was your job. Um, and you saw combat. Uh, can you name the battle you were in or any? 
so many, many. So, so many. many. Yeah. How many? My God. All the time I was there. How long were you there then? For how many months? I was. I I got there in December of fifty, mm -hmm. and I lasted until October of fifty one. So you had eleven months of just yeah. constant yeah. battle. Yeah. And what were the ob objectives that you, you're? What were you fighting for, or what were you trying to achieve in these battles? Were you retreating, or were you going forward? We were. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the distinguish you in the citation down there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> that was April 18th, we jumped off on a, an attack. And that's when my squad leader was just killed. Okay. And uh, I sent word down to Sergeant Rosensteel, and he crawled up to our position. And he told me a pair of binoculars, and he said, the squad's yours. Okay. And then, eventually, in June, I think it was June or July, I took over the section. How large was your section? How many men did you have then? Three squads. Three squads. How many yeah. men is that? Ten. Ten. Were there many casualties in your unit? Oh, yes. Yeah. How yeah. many? That day, when uh, <clears throat> the machine gun opened up and uh, they took out almost two platoons, that's 40 guys. 40 men? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How did you make it through? Luck. Did you sit? And you said you sustained some injuries. What did you? What kind of injury did you have? Get over there. Uh, a friend of mine. <clears throat> we were in a dry creek bed, and we heard an explosion down, down the way. And then I saw two stretcher bearers, and only one guy in the back, and. It, we were in a dry, dry creek bed, mm -hmm. and he was tripping all over the place. So I decided to help him only to the level, you know, because there was a big valley, yeah, and we had come across. And uh, <clears throat> then when I grabbed this the stretcher. I figured <laughs> this is heavy, you yeah. know, and this wasn't a big guy, you yeah. know, and uh, <clears throat> I, I guess late, later on he died. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I changed the bandage on his shoulder, and uh, then we got him to the medics. And before we got, we were sitting taking a break, and uh, there was all kinds of explosions around us, you know. So we got the hell out of there. And uh, when we got down to the medics, and we told them, there's all kinds of explosions, you know. I don't know if they were mortars or grenades or what, you know. And uh, they said it must have been something they bypassed. An outfit they bypassed, you know. So they kept us overnight. And I remember a medic that used to be in our company. He came, I was sitting near a stream, and he came and threw me a pair of brand new socks because mine was mushy, mushy, you know. And uh, <clears throat> the next morning, we left, and, but we didn't go to the position that we heard the explosions, you know, around us, you know. So there was a trench, and a friend of mine and I, I was a big smoker then, you know. <clears throat> 
So we stopped and had a smoke. I don't know if he smoked or not. You know. And uh, all of a sudden there was a shot. And he says, I'm hit. And then there was another shot. And then I got it in the hand. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> then we... Was that a sniper or was it just... I don't know what it was. It. Yeah. Now what kind of... Did, were you shelled or was it artillery or mortars? Oh yeah, yeah. Everything? Yeah. Any airplanes? Or yeah. were you, any airplanes? The North Koreans flying, bombing you or yeah. anything? Or no, just, no. just shelling? And mortar fire? Yeah. Rockets? Almost every day. Mm -hmm. Every day, wow. Were any of your unit captured or anything like that? Any prisoners of war out I of your unit? I think my best buddy. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you read the citation. Here. Okay, I will. We we were on a riding on a tank, and we were trying to bust up a roadblock that had 2,700 troops boggled up in there, you know. And, uh, These K were American soldiers? Yeah. 2,700? Wow. Yeah. And uh, I don't know what happened, but um, I don't know if it was artillery or, but a, a round landed on a tank and blew my buddy off and the tank rolled on and uh, I landed on the ground. But <clears throat> there was a friend of mine, his stomach was opened up and uh, <clears throat> I tried to patch him up but it was so bad that uh, I, there was nothing I can do. Really. And I was trying to get a couple of shots off you know, and uh, <clears throat> and I took an aim, and I says, we don't have any Chinese redheads, and it was my sergeant. He was without a helmet? Yeah. Wow. And he was wounded in the leg, mm -hmm. in the ankle. So I had... You cared for him? Yeah. I had two two wounded people, you know. Now this is when you were you weren't in charge yet. You, it wasn't the sergeant wasn't dead yet, right? No. This is the one that died later on. Yeah. Oh man. Now you have a lot of very distinguished medals and citations. Can you tell me more about them? The unit citation, the presidential citation. We wrote them down before, but I want you to talk about them yeah. and why you got them. Well, on I think it was April 18th, we were on a move and we were taking objective after objective. I'm going to let you read it, you know, mm -hmm. and then you can put it down, whatever you want, you know. And uh, this worked up to the 22nd of April and we were pushing and uh, we backed them uh, up against their s supplies yeah. and that's when they hit us mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, so you had them cornered yeah and they had to come back yeah What what was the most brutal thing with the winter? That's my next question about the weather. Yeah. And the summer was like 110. Mm -hmm. And the winter, one night they told us it was going to get to 38 below zero. And... Uh, How did like, you stay warm? Huh? How did you manage? Stay warm. One guy had a fart sack. 
What's a fart sack? Sleeping bag. Okay. <laughs> the guy that <laughs> the guy that was off duty kept it you, warm. Yeah. He 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 kept warm. And we took we threw our overcoats away because they were too heavy. Mm -hmm. And we just had field jackets. Were they lined? Huh? They were lined. They had liners in the yeah. field jackets. Pile uh, jacket. Long underwear. Yeah. A sweater. Yeah. A OD shirt. And uh, they went by layers. Right. And the Chinese, they just had quilted. Right. Yeah. And lightweight. Yeah. You know. And I guess they were warm. Yeah. You know. Wow. Can you tell me more about your citations? You know, your medals? Start well, with. Start with you know the presidential unit citation. Tell me about that that you had. You got. I was just telling you. When you broke through, what was it for? What part of the battle or? I got it all downstairs. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Were you involved in any planning battles or anything like that? All, the, all, all the battles were planned. Were you involved in the planning? N no. You just carried yeah. them out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you said you, you became a sergeant in charge of that group, sergeant first class, and you led how many? Thirty. Thirty, okay. And here, these next questions are more about life in the service. We've covered the battle. Um, how, did you how did you keep in touch with your family over there, back here, you know, your family in Britain? I was single, and I... I, I Wrote to my mother okay. and my sister. Okay. Yeah. What was mail call like when you were over there? Good. Yeah. yeah. And what was the food like when you went in Korea? We ate out of sea rations. For the whole time? Yeah. For nine, ten months? Yeah. What was your favorite sea ration? Uh, rice and spaghetti. <laughs> Chicken and rice. Chicken and rice. Chicken and rice, yeah. Did you have enough supplies over there? Oh, yeah. You had yeah. plenty of stuff? Yeah. And how did you deal with the stress of this fighting all the time? Yeah. How did you deal with that? Yeah. You, you, you had a hard time. Yeah. yeah. You were worried about your friends. Yeah. <clears throat> You know, something should happen to them, which eventually did. You yeah. Know. And I got his picture downstairs. <clears throat> My wife and I, she's from Japan, mm -hmm. and uh, her girlfriend is from her hometown, lives in Detroit. And that's where my buddy was from. Okay. And we went twice to Detroit. To see his family, and you know, this is after the after Korea, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you have anything with you for good luck? Any charms or anything? Any charms? Yeah. No. Any good luck charms? A horse. A what? A horse. A horse. What? What do you mean? A little figure with a horse. There you are. Yeah. Why did you have a horse? Because I love them. How did you entertain yourselves over there? Did you have any entertainment at all? Uh, <clears throat> any USO I saw, shows? I saw a country singer. Okay. One time. All right. Elton Britt. Okay. Anything else? And uh, I guess the Marines saw.
different organizations, you know. So, Elton Britt, was, was that a part of a U.S. show or something like that? Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. Did you have any type of clubs over there or anything? No. Any beer, booze or anything? No, oh, yeah, beer. Beer? Korean beer? Yeah. You never say anything about the Debbie Reynolds. Huh? Oh, you saw Debbie Reynolds too? Huh? You saw Debbie Reynolds? Oh, I'm on the way over. Oh, okay. Did you have leave from Korea? Did you go to Japan or...? or you get any r &R? I got a picture of uh, my buddy and I. We went to Fort Knox together. And uh, we shipped over together. And uh, because we were in the same company. And my name was McDonald. And he was Moeller. Okay. They picked us up to go to Japan for five days R&R. &R. Mm -hmm. What'd you do? <laughs> Drink and get laid. All right. That's... So did you travel anywhere else? Just to Japan during that time? I'm going to tell you of a little incident. Okay. When we came back to Hawaii from Japan, and uh, the nurse on a on a flight said we're reaching the point of no return, and the engine shut off. One of the engines shut off. Mm -hmm. And you know, you get used to the helm of the engine. And uh, when they turn, and she just finished saying the point of no return. And everybody looked at each other. Says, this is the end? You know, we're going to die like this? So, and uh, we made it to California. On huh? um, what? Was it a four engine plane? or? Huh? How many engines you had on the plane? I think it was four. Four. Yeah. One, one crapped out? Yeah. One quit? Wow. Uh, so that's one funny event. Is there any more humorous events? <laughs> any more things that were funny? No. no. Did you pull any good pranks or tricks that you can think of on each other? On each other? Sure. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, <clears throat> one February, we, uh, it was absolutely gorgeous weather. So we heated snow in our helmets. Mm -hmm. And uh, my buddy, Tropics, he was sleeping in the in the foxhole. So I jumped on top of him and I was talking Chinese. <laughs> and he whipped out a 45 and he almost shot me in the face. <laughs> wow. That's funny. Any other tricks you pulled? <laughs> that's, a pretty, that's pretty dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <coughs> I what, wasn't what? talking Chinese. I was just going, ting chong, ting ting chong, ting ting. <laughs> that is funny. That is good. What did you think of your officers over there? Oh yeah, they were great. They were. Captain St Herman Stein. He was absolutely great. And. Uh, <clears throat> They were all, all the officers were great, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what about your fellow soldiers? Great. Your fellow non cops like yeah. yourself? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, this is after the service now. Can you recall the day when the service ended, when you were done? Discharge. I hitchhiked home. To New Britain? Yeah. From where? Camp Kilmer, New Jersey. Okay. And that's one thing. That's where you had your out-processing? 
Yeah. Okay. I called everybody Gus from the time I got there and, and then everybody start calling each other Gus. Why? I don't know why. Was there Gustafson in a group? <laughs> and uh, one time I got stopped by the MPs. What for? Just going in the gate, you know. And he says, this must be Gus. <laughs> what did you do the days and the weeks after the war, when you were done, when you came home? When I came home? Yeah. Drove a bus. Okay. And where? For who? New Britain Trans. Okay. Uh, you, did you go back to school or tech school or trade school no, or anything? No, no, okay, no. You just went to work. Did you use the GI Bill in any way? No. Did you use the VA loans to buy a house? I used the VA loan to buy the first house. Yeah. Okay. Do you still have any uh, close relationships with people that you served with? Do you know anybody that was with your unit in Korea? Do you still know each other or have any contact with any of these men? Well, <clears throat> I got a, a, a call from Moeller that Ammon Anthony died and my buddy from Washington, state of Washington, he passed away the week, the two weeks before. Okay. And I used to send him all of them credit, you know, Christmas cards. Mm -hmm. Did you join any veterans organizations after the war? Yeah, VFW yeah. in Suffield. Okay. And I, I transferred to uh, Plainville. Okay. And what other organization? The Horse Guard you joined also. Yeah. And when did you join the Horse Guard? 1957. Mm -hmm. And why did you do that? Low horses. Mm -hmm. I started riding horses in 1945. Okay. Why? Or where? Huh? Where? Where? Yeah. On Slater Road in New Britain. Mm -hmm. And uh, a friend of mine, I grew up in a project. A friend of mine told me there's a, a guy up on Slater Road that if you give him a dollar, he'll let you ride a couple of horses, you know. And this guy knew I was crazy about horses, so, mm -hmm. so uh, I asked my mother. How old were you then? You were 16? I guess I was 13. 13, okay. Have you attended any reunions for your group or your, your company? No. no. Oh, we did. Well, I went to regiment. Twice. Regimental. Uh, down in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. Two times? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did your s service affect your life? You saw a lot of combat, horrible things. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add to this interview? like to say? We're about finished now, this talking part. I'm glad I joined, mm -hmm. and I met a lot of great guys, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, putting the war aside, which I went through, uh, and I participated in, you know, it was tough, but you had to do it, you know, for your, your country and uh, yourself, you know. so. And for your fellow soldiers. Huh? For your fellow men that you're, yeah. you're serving with. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mac, I just want to thank you for sharing this really good 
Yeah. Very interesting part of your life. It's going to be great. I, you know, I'm honored to have talked to you about this stuff. Yeah. To be honest with you, I didn't know all this. And that's what's because I know you. That, that's what makes it so yeah. much better. Yeah, yeah. And that's I'm just very thankful that you gave me the time to do this. And that's the so. horse guard was the only outfit. And I'll show you the picture now. Mm -hmm. The only outfit that ever recommended uh, the veterans of the horse, uh, Korean veterans. It was the only unit that honored them? Yeah. We were at camp. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, they gave me a plaque. And uh, who was the commandant then? Huh? Who was the commandant then? Richard Bellevue. Bellevue. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's great. All right. Well, thank you, man.